Do you want to start and grow your own social media advertising company from the comfort of your home with little or no money? In just two and a half years, Socialistic's revenue nearly quadrupled, with Jason's e-commerce company progressively tracking towards the $1 million mark. Now, one of the things that makes us really unique is we're a month-to-month -month agency. How are you able to quadruple your sales over the last two and a half years, being on, on your way to a million dollars? Usually monthly retainers for the types of clients that we work with range anywhere between two to five K a month. Jason's innovative thinking and can-do attitude has created a lifestyle for him where he can manage his full-time service company from anywhere in the world where there's an internet connection. So where are you at today as far as how many clients you're servicing and how's that changed from when you started? Because we're virtual, because I have a team that's spread across the entire world, right. we're always open. And on this episode, he's gonna take us through all the necessary steps to creating and starting a successful marketing agency. Everybody always asks us, what is the best client for us? And it's really three things. But that's because that margin was huge, but now you've taken that big margin and reinvested it back into the business. Right. The biggest piece of advice that I got that I really got on board with, charge what you're worth. You'll be able to find out how he was able to secure an impressive list of clients like the Air Force, Trupanion, and Habitat for Humanity, to name a few. You guys, we gotta be quiet because of the environment that we're in. So, but let's go meet Jason. It's right there. That's the man we're about to interview and talk to. Hi, Jason. How you doing? Hey, good to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure's all mine. For sure. Thanks for your time. Uh, in a couple minutes, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the social uh, media marketing sure. company and how that all began for you yeah. and, and why? I'm originally from Chicago and moved to Seattle for Microsoft and worked uh, at Microsoft Advertising Office for Mac. This was around 06, 07, before social media was really taking off and uh, got in on it early mm -hmm. and uh, launched uh, social media for Office for Mac, their last physical product, and then turned uh, that into basically a career. I just kind of stuck with it. Uh, I was unfortunately one of the layoffs of Microsoft back in 09. I they see. laid off like 5,000 people for the first time ever. And uh, I was a casualty of that. And uh, they ended up hiring me back, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But I had a year to uh, basically kind of figure things out. And I started to blog, started to really learn about social media and built a following. And really, that was a big uh, launch, launching point for me in terms of social. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to do my own thing. And then it was about uh, almost two, three years ago that the timing was right in my life to, to kind of take that leap. And I launched uh, Socialistics, uh, a social media agency, and uh, we've been we've been kind of taking off ever since. Yeah. Jason, let's talk about your target audience. Uh, did you decide on who you wanted to target prior to opening this up on a bigger scale, where you are now, or how did that evolve for you? It's a good question. I knew that when I started an agency, I didn't want to be a generalist. Uh, so. There's kind of two paths that a lot of advice these days talks about if you're going to start an agency, either pick a niche or pick a specialty. Right. Even, and even better, do both. Because if you want to stand out, that's, that's the best thing to do uh, as, in terms of a differentiator. I ultimately decided to focus on social media. That's kind of where I had a, made a name for myself. And, uh, and then it kind of evolved into B2B. So now we're, we're a B2B social media agency, predominantly. We have B2C clients, so we took it even a step further because doing social media well in a B2B environment is, is much more complex than B2C. There's mm -hmm. longer customer life cycles, you're having to engage in a, in a longer period of time versus point and click product purchasing. So we really decided to kind of pick a specialty and kind of stay in that lane. And it's been hard because we've had clients that, oh, do you do this? Well, I'm like, we can, but I've learned that you really have to work hard to kind of stay in your lane. I mean, right. you can build partnerships to kind of deliver other things, but if you really want to continue to be a successful agency, you really need to stay in your lane, be the very best at what you do for who you do it for, and that's going to allow you to continue to grow uh, as opposed to just having to fight for every piece of business that's out there, which isn't a scalable strategy, in, in my opinion. Right. What do you charge for your services and how do you come up with sort of those price points? Sure, so it, it varies. It's been uh, a lot of testing and figuring out how to deliver on what we do. It's really time-based. You know, you try to figure out how, how long will it take the folks that I have on this 
to do this type of work. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of tested that back and forth. Uh, usually monthly retainers for the types of clients that we work with range anywhere between two to five K a month. Okay. And, and uh, what's the time commitment on, on those price they're getting, points? They're getting a team. They're getting a, an account manager, a social media manager, a, a paid ad strategist okay. that are attacking the work for them that are putting in roughly 30 to 40 hour, 34, 30 to 40 man hours in a month. In a month, okay. To, to do the work. We're middle of the road, okay. I would say. When industry look, wise? When you look at the industry, you've got your giant agencies. You know, they're gonna, they're working with the Nikes and the Cokes of the world. They're, you know, those oh, yeah, businesses spending, have unlimited budgets, yeah. you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars a month. And then you've got your folks that are just starting out, you know, one person operation, maybe just graduated college, can't do as much as we can. They're probably gonna charge you half that roughly, mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit less, but you get what you pay for. Right. And, and, so, uh, and it's all about the results, as you mentioned. It is. Right. You I can mean, spend five grand and get nothing back. You could spend two and get right. more as than five. As long as you can demonstrate ROI to a client, they're gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna be comfortable with what you pay for that sort of thing. How about costs of starting a marketing agency like this? Are there any particular costs that you didn't anticipate and incurred? I bootstrapped what I did. I mean, it was definitely a slow build. I started with, uh, it was kind of a side hustle to begin with. Right. There's certainly a cost involved. I mean, it's, it's a lot less expensive than a brick and mortar startup when you're having to pay rent and you have physical things that you kind of have to surround yourself with. Because you can do this with a laptop in yeah. the middle of a parking lot. And people are. I mean, there's plenty of examples of agencies or consultants that are um, that are basically doing this sort mm -hmm. of thing. As long as you have a laptop and the smarts, right. you and know. that's really all you need. I mean, there's you know you're going to have to pay for things, you know, tools and things of that nature to kind of deliver what you do. But cost is not a prohibitive factor in mm -hmm. starting an agency it's really just having the experience and the passion and the entrepreneurial chops to just kind right. of go after it so where are you at today as far as how many clients you're servicing and how's that changed from when you started well we are our client we have about between 15 and 20 right now currently okay uh, currently and um, how much do you think you need to get to a million um, probably twice that. I really? would say you, you know, get to a million to, with 50 clients. Uh, I would say between 40 and 50 clients, roughly. Uh, uh -huh. Now that depends too. I mean, once you start to right. make a name for yourself, um, you might get into a position where you can, you know, start to charge a little bit more. Yeah. You know, you become you a little bit more, more value. of a known commodity, and um, so it really depends. You know, I'm Some not going to. I'm not going to raise rates unless it feels right. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I feel like we've evolved and we're worth that. I always want clients to feel like they're getting value from us. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not, for me, it's not about greed. It's mm -hmm. about consistent, healthy growth that's in the best interest of the business and servicing our clients. How are you able to quadruple your sales over the last two and a half years being on, on your way to a million dollars? Yeah, um, it's been an interesting 2020. Uh, before the pandemic hit, we were on a trajectory to to probably hit a million by the end of the year. Okay, um, we had really kind of crossed that that threshold. Then uh, then it hit, and lost some clients. Um, just due to financial reasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah just, just like you know, everyone else. Given the choice between spending money on marketing and keeping people employed, you know, they're going to take the latter. Yeah, some sense of normalcy will return, but that normalcy be, will be different than it ever was. Right. So I think companies are starting to realize, well, we, we kind of need to get back to business. So we've seen we've seen things pick up quite dramatically over the past month. Even we're we're back over uh, half a million, and uh, there's a good chance that we could still crack a million by the end of the year. Oh, that would be and awesome. If a lot of that might depend on you know market environments, but we're we're pushing hard to mm -hmm. uh, continue to grow at a pace that makes sense for us. We uh, we don't take every client. It's got to be a good fit. So we've had a natural kind of growth. One of the things that our viewers uh, I think would really love to know, given it's a business, is your profit margins. In this industry, do they vary? Why? What are yours? Your profit margin in the beginning, it, it kind of fluctuates. If, if you're a one-man show, it kind of starts where it's pretty high because you're just right. charging for your time and you don't have a lot of hard costs. 
then when you kind of break through and you're not needing to pull people in to deliver on the service and maybe you're sliding more into business development, CEO, president territory where okay. you're handing off the day-to-day -day stuff um, and then you're starting to invest in maybe a little bit more technology to do what you're doing, you go from a really healthy profit margin to <laughs> really good one, razor yeah. thin. But that's because that margin was huge. But now you've taken that big margin and reinvested it back into the business. Right. So it's almost at like, the expense of a. It's like here you're going to go down to here, and then and as that's you, scary. It is, and then but you there, this is unavoidable. Like if you want to be more than just the one person, mm -hmm. you have to take that leap to here. And then what happens is every client you add, then your profit it almost doubles. We were hovering around fifteen percent ish. These days we're at about. 35. Okay. I'd love to get into the 40s, which is totally doable. Now, one of the things that makes us really unique is we're a month to month agency. We don't okay. require our clients to commit long term. Is that which, pretty unique for the industry? It is. And other agencies don't like that. They don't like that because the reality is. A long-term contract only benefits the agency. Right. And I, I completely get it. If you're looking to kind of sell your business someday, it's going to be more mar it, it's going to be more marketable to buyers if you have clients that are committed to long-term contracts. But it's been interesting that since we started that way and it's really been a disruptor for us to help us grow. You would ask, how have we been able to 3x, 4x? Yeah. It's yeah. things like that. Yeah. I mean, you have to disrupt. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the whole idea of disrupting an industry. You know, one of my favorites, like when you look at um, like Uber, for example. A I mean, totally I, I, always, I always think about them or whenever they invented that or however that, like they're sitting in a room and they just thought to themselves, what is everything that people hate about getting a taxi or getting a <laughs> ride somewhere? What would be the best way to do that? Like, what would be the best user experience? And I wanted to take that kind of mindset with our agency. Like, what do clients hate about working with agencies? If they could design an agency and they work with them, and the perfect way, what would that look like? How many people do you have working with you, for you currently? Um, how did you find them? Any tips and tricks on who to hire? Uh, how do you look for and how? Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a team how do you of, retain them, sorry. Yeah, I have a team of six right now. Well, we're actually looking six, for okay. another because uh, we're growing pretty quickly. Finding great talent is one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. when, when I was at Microsoft early in my career, that's one of the things that I learned. I took away from that more than anything. I went through their recruiting, um, training and interviewing, and I learned a ton about how to find the right people and, and how to manage people and how to take care of people. I'm authentic and I care about people. Like if you're in my inner circle, you're going to get taken care of. It's small and there's not many in it, but if you're in it, you'll be taken care you're of. gonna be taken care of. So I'm really lucky to have an incredible team uh, right now that allows us to do, like I, we wouldn't have what we have if it wasn't for the people I had put around me. Mm -hmm. You need to hire great people and get out of their way. You know, you need to exactly. trust them to do their work and to take risks and to feel freedom around what they do and how they work. In terms of disrupting, if you're wanting to start an agency, you really need to think of what is what is everybody else not doing. For us, that was not doing long-term contracts, right? And if you're trying That's to huge. build something and grow and really disrupt, that was that was a big thing, and it, it still can be because most agencies still do that. You want to compete with the big boys. That's a way to really disrupt. Clients love that because they know you're basically putting the, the you're walking the talk. You're saying I'm going to earn this work every day, every week, every month, or you can go elsewhere. So that's a big way to do it. The other thing for us is really focusing on, as a social media agency, is real metrics. Clients don't want to hear about Facebook likes or Twitter followers or metrics that don't matter their business. You've got to speak their language. Leads, customers, sales. You have to be able to map what you do exactly to what it is that they're trying to do, really establishing their goals and objectives and making sure that you held yourself accountable to those results and then they're gonna stick with you. And then those month to month contracts that maybe keep you a little you know, awake at night wondering <laughs> if they're gonna stick around, it, it works itself out because right. if you deliver results, you take care of people, you're good to them, they're gonna stick around and you don't need those long-term contracts. That's awesome. Yeah. Our number one core value, and this, this stemmed from why I really wanted to do this from day one, is the word freedom. I was tired of being tied to a desk, I was tired of sitting in a car for three hours going to work. 
I was tired of my life being dictated by what I did. And I wanted to flip that script. I wanted to build an agency that allowed me to not only create freedom for myself to live it the way that I want under my terms, but to build an environment for people to live the same way. And I will go to the grave continuing to build a business committed. that allows for that. They love it. They are loyal because of it. We have an incredible, they're an extended That's family. That's retention to reason to, right yeah. there. I mean, yeah. Why you, leave? You, you decide when you're going to hang out with your kid. You decide that you want to fly to Italy and spend a month there and work from there. It doesn't make a difference to me. As long as you're available and you do great work, right. live your life on your terms. That's really cool, man. So that's the, that's the biggest thing that really brings me a, a ton of pride is to be able to give that to, pe to as many people as I can. Everybody always asks us, what is the best client for us? And it's really three things. One, they don't have to be convinced that marketing is a thing their business needs to do. Mm -hmm. If I have to sell them, like, you should market, like, that never ends well because they're not going to have the patience for they don't it see to the value be in that. successful. Yeah. The second is that they have a product or service that's wanted or needed. Marketing can't fix a bad business. So if, if we feel like the product's not there yet or their website really needs some work like we advise and like we really think you need to take these steps before you throw any money at marketing because it's not going to solve your your challenges and then the third is can we help them can we actually help them are we the right fit for them and sometimes we might not be and if there's one thing that we've learned is better to say no than get into a relationship that's never going to end well because you, you know bad reviews yeah, bad for both bad for both sides waste of time we just won't do it so that's contributed to our the velocity of our growth. Like we, you know, if we took every piece of business that came our way, we'd we'd be a bigger agency. But I just I've had the the luxury of being able to take our time to do it the right way, pick the right clients, and kind of continue to build off of that. And I think we're now in that sweet spot where that patience and that approach is really starting to pay off for us. Jason, what percentage of your business comes from long-term clients and as far as cultivating relationships anything specific that you do that makes clients come back the majority of our business is clients that we've worked with for six plus months okay so so that's 80 90 percent of what you oh, have for sure i okay. mean i think that you know a success a successful agency is as much if not more about holding on to clients as it is as winning new ones Gotcha. So it's it's critically important that we make sure that every client that we work with feels like the most important client. You know, we can't, you know, we don't want to lose clients for for reasons. You know, obviously we're not producing results. That's but you know that doesn't happen with us. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, the only churn that we've ever really had is because I made a mistake early on. You know, accepting a client paying less than they probably should be, or I was a little bit iffy on their product, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to take a flyer on this one. So. That's where you get into situations where it wasn't a good fit. Or, or I've had situations once or twice where a client treats my team poorly. And mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I'll, can't I don't, I'm not having that. that. Yeah. I've worked yeah. hard to build a really quality team and keeping them happy um, is, is critically important to me. So if clients treat them poorly, I have a very small window of uh, patience when it comes to this that be sort the of case. thing. We're a virtual agency. When okay. I first started Social Distics, I thought, okay, well, eventually I'm doing this out of my house. Then eventually I'm going to get my office in Seattle and I'm going to be this, you know, that that's the that's the path to success. Big grand. And what I found was, you know, as I added people to the team and we were virtual, I turned a weakness into a strength. At least what I thought was a weakness. Oh, when clients come to our website and they don't see a, a big fancy office or address that's going to be prohibited for us. It's a weakness. It's a weakness. But a lot of things that I've listened to and read is learn how to turn your weaknesses into strengths. And that's exactly what we did. I said, you know what? I'm going to embrace what we are. I'm going to embrace the fact that we're virtual and we don't have a big fancy office. Why does that benefit the client? Well, we're going to be able to be more competitive on price for you because I don't have to spend Absolutely. thousands of dollars on an office and all this yeah. fancy stuff. Yeah. Lease Number commitments, etc. Number two, I'm going to attract better talent because... I can, my talent pool is the world. It's not That's Seattle. That's huge. And, uh, and the third is just accessibility. Accessibility and responsiveness. Because we're virtual, because I have a team that's spread across the entire world, right. we're always open. If they need to get a hold of somebody or if they have a question, we are on it. I mean, right. literally, literally within five to 10 minutes in most cases, if somebody has a question, phone call, email, chat, whatever, somebody's awake, somebody's working. So that accessibility is a game changer. So. I really started to embrace that. And instead of working towards this big office, I'm like, nope, 
we're a virtual agency. That's awesome. That's so fascinating, guys. Um, I, if you guys haven't yet already subscribed to our channel, please hit that hit that subscribe button. Uh, we encourage you to comment below, ask any questions. It definitely helps with the YouTube algorithms, and uh, we appreciate you for engaging us. Uh, that that would be that would be cool. Ask questions. Jason's here for for all of you guys. Um, quite a fascinating industry, I got I got to say. How you were able to attract Air Force as a client, Habitat for Humanity, and some of these other bigger names. Sure. What's the story on that? Air Force definitely opened some doors for us. Landing them was less about them finding us and more about us nurturing them. Mm -hmm. They came to us very, really frustrated with their current agency relationship. They were sending them these 30-page reports that made no sense to them. And I said, well, you know, what? what are your goals and objectives? And ultimately Two it was to, to, to raise awareness of the opportunities in the Air Force for people to be recruited, to, 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 to consider okay. the military as a career. We really took the time to understand what is it, what does success look like? To, it's a great question that I always ask clients. Mm -hmm. This is the best question you can ask. What does success look like to you six months from now? And I even frame it up further, say, imagine six months from now, you think back to hiring us and you think to yourself, Hiring socialistics or insert your agency was the best decision I've ever made. What would need to have happened for me to think that way? So that's that's my favorite question to ask because it gets them in that state like, well, and then they start to really answer that question in a tangible way. And then we come up with a strategy. Okay, well, based on that, this is what it would take to get there. And that's what we're going to be held accountable for. You know, when you take that approach, people fall in love with you. And they want to work with you. Absolutely, you don't even have to sell them. Just be, you know, be yourself, be authentic, help them, and then they're inherently going to want to work with you if the numbers line up. So another tip for if you're an agency just starting out or wanting to start out is you really, and it's hard. Like you got to pay the bills. Sometimes you got to take what you can get, but you really want to put yourself in a position where. You don't say yes to everybody because not everybody's going to be a fit. And the, the biggest piece of advice that I got that I really got on board with, charge what you're worth. It Sometimes it feels uncomfortable, but you know what you're worth. And you don't want to really stray from that too much because then you set the bar there. And then that, you know, even if you try to go back and try to charge more of what you're really worth, it's never going to work out. So always be comfortable with what you're worth. As long as you're going to deliver the results and you know what you can do, charge what you're worth. If they can't afford it, you got to pass it up and look for the next opportunity. These principles are fascinating, guys. If you're not blown away by the, just the simple ideas that we're talking about here um, and how they directly impact your bottom line of the business, your scaling of the business, your growth of the business, mind-blowing. Habitat for Humanity was a, an event. I went to okay. a. So you got a uh, return on that. Yeah, it was just happened to. They had somebody at an event that we had a booth at, and had I did a presentation there. Uh, anytime you get an opportunity to, to kind of help people by doing webinars or doing a speech, is a great way to get great good visibility. They heard that, like what they heard. That one took six months, though. I mean, I I, I went in, again, I right? gave them a proposal, and I just kept, you know, to us that's a strategic client, right? You know, for them we we discounted. It's mm -hmm. a great cause. It's feel good work. Right. That was I think less all of about, us need to have a part of yeah, that. It was less about making money and more about helping an organization that really needed it. And, you know, I'm not naive. Of course, having Habitat for Humanity in our portfolio mm -hmm. helps us. That's the value for us, right. you know, showing great work for a good cause. So What I'm hearing, though, is like somehow they found you. You were in a database. But what it came down to is follow-up. Follow-up, follow-up. It's the, it's the, and the quality of the follow-up. Right. You know, never always being persistent. I, in, in my emails, when I follow-up, I always say, it's a yes until it's a no, so I'm going to keep going. Yep. So until they say no, it's it's a yes. Yeah, sometimes so. it takes seven, eight times to reach out until it does. you get the true yes. I mean, you just got to catch people at the right time. Yeah. Some people take a long time to make a decision, so. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this awesome episode with Jason Yormark, the owner of Socialistics. What an incredible amount of content we heard today. Um, the questions, the answers, the things that they're doing to provide paramount service to their clients and what that's doing to their business. I hope you took a lot out and come back and rewatch it. That's what you need to do to really grasp some of the principles, some of the ideas. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. Comment below, engage with us. It helps the YouTube algorithm. We do have a blog. It's in the description below as well. And a lot of awesome previous episodes, different businesses, and a lot more coming up. Stay tuned. We're with you. We're here for you. Take care.